Inoculation is the process by which you introduce bacteria into liquid media. In this video, we will demonstrate best practices to perform inoculation, ensuring sufficient numbers of bacteria for plasma DNA isolation. So, you may be thinking, why can't I just grab a chunk of my glycerol stock in the freezer and throw it in a large volume of media for growth? As we explained in a previous video on how to streak bacteria on plates, while the majority of bacterial cells in a glycerol stock or stab should be genetically identical, there may be an occasional mutant hidden within the population. By starting a small liquid culture from a single colony, you can ensure that the liquid culture contains a monoclonal population of cells. Before we begin, we'll need to gather the necessary materials. You will need a spray bottle containing 70% isopropanol or 70% ethanol, pre-made liquid LB media, LB agar plates containing single colonies of your plasmid of interest, sterile 15 milliliter conical tubes, sterile culture tubes, appropriate antibiotic for your plasmid growth, Bunsen or alcohol burner, autoclave toothpicks or sterile pipette tips, shaking incubator set at temperature appropriate for your plasmid, a 10 milliliter serological pipette, and a pipette aid. For any work performed at the bench, we recommend decontaminating your bench by wiping down with 70% isopropanol or ethanol. Now you can set up the materials needed for inoculation. First, you will need to prepare your liquid growth media. We usually use Luria broth, or LB, as it is the most widely used medium for bacterial culture. If your media does not contain antibiotics yet, you will need to add the appropriate antibiotic before proceeding. For any plasmid requested from Adgene, the antibiotic resistance will be listed on the plasmid page under the Growth in Bacteria section. Our plasmid contains ampicillin resistance. At Adgene, our lab uses carbonicillin instead of ampicillin. Carbonicillin is more stable than ampicillin, so it's more effective at isolating bacteria containing the plasmid of interest. If your lab uses ampicillin, try not to use plates or media that have been sitting in the fridge for longer than a month. Always make sure to look up the correct antibiotic concentration needed for plates and media. You can find a handy table to access this information at adgene.org. Since we will need 10 milliliters of media for our inoculations, we will first transfer 10 milliliters of LB media to a 15 milliliter conical tube. Now we are ready to add the antibiotics. We have 10 milliliters of media, so we will need 10 microliters of the 1000X carbonicillin stock. Add the appropriate amount of antibiotics to the media, making sure that the pipette tip does not touch the neck of the bottle. Reflame the tube, cap with lid, and invert to mix in the antibiotic. Next, arrange three culture tubes in a rack. Label the first tube as a negative control, and label the other two tubes with the name of the plasmid. It's always a good idea to select more than one single colony for inoculations. To track these samples, we will label the tubes plasmid A and plasmid B, indicating same plasmid but different colonies. It is also a good idea to add your initials and the date to the tubes. Your negative control tube provides quality assurance when growing liquid cultures. The negative control tube is your fake inoculation tube and will contain liquid media, antibiotic, and the toothpick used for picking, but no additional bacteria. If there is any growth in this tube the next day, this indicates that a contaminant was present and therefore you cannot trust any growth observed in the culture. Transfer two milliliters of the LB carbonicillin media into each culture tube using a serological pipette. Using a sterile toothpick, select a single colony from your LB agar plate. Remove the culture tube cap and drop the toothpick into the culture tube labeled with your plasma name and replace the cap. Make sure the toothpick does not touch the outside of the tube. For the negative control tube, you will want to simply drop in a sterile toothpick. If your tubes do not have sterile caps, you can loosely cover the tubes with aluminum foil. Just make sure you do not use a cap that is airtight. Bacteria need oxygen to grow, so using a loose fitting cap ensures proper bacterial growth. Now we are ready to incubate the cultures overnight. Most bacteria require a growth incubation temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. 
Some strains do require growth at lower temperatures, so it's always a good idea to check the incubation temperature for the strain you are working with. If you are using an adgene plasmid, the growth temperature will be listed under the Growth in Bacteria section of the plasmid page. Bacterial liquid cultures should be incubated on a gentle shaker in order to ensure proper aeration and nutrient availability. Incubation using a shaker also avoids bacteria clumping at the bottom of the tubes. Liquid cultures can be incubated without shaking in a 37 degrees Celsius incubator, but you will need to incubate for longer, usually one day or more, to obtain an adequate number of cells. If you have a low copy number plasmid, you may need to grow your cultures longer than overnight. To determine if your adgene plasmid is high or low copy, see the copy number information under the Growth in Bacteria section of the plasmid page. After incubation, check all tubes for growth. Your negative control tube should appear clear with no bacterial growth. So what happens if, after growing your culture overnight, you do not observe any bacterial growth? First, allow the culture more time to grow, as some bacterial cultures have slower growth rates. Bacteria incubated at 30 degrees Celsius rather than 37 degrees Celsius often require longer incubation times. Double check that the antibiotic in your LB media matches the antibiotic resistance for your plasmid. Using the wrong antibiotic will yield no bacterial growth. If the single colony used for inoculation was not freshly streaked, you should re-streak your bacteria onto a new LB agar plate before growing in liquid culture. Fresh colonies usually yield greater bacterial growth. More aeration may help to increase the density of the culture. Normally, cultures shake at 150 to 250 RPM. Try increasing this speed to 350 to 400 RPM to obtain a higher cell density. Once you obtain adequate culture growth, you can spin down your liquid cultures and isolate your plasmid DNA by following a DNA isolation protocol. For long-term storage, you can proceed with creating a glycerol stock. Thank you for watching our inoculation protocol video. Check out our other protocol pages, including purifying your plasmid DNA and creating a glycerol stock at adgene.org slash protocols. Leave a comment below to let us know what videos you'd like to see in the future or to tell us how we can improve. Adgene, a better way to share science.